Hey guys and welcome to another Corona tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be focusing on using ray switchers. In the first part of this two part tutorial we'll take a look at how to utilize ray switchers to, to do some sort of fakes or to introduce some artistic control in our image. And in the second part of, of this tutorial we'll take a look at how to utilize ray switchers to do some performance optimizations in our scene. So let's get started. Mm, the ray switchers in Corona come in two forms. Uh, one is material, one is map. And they both return different things based on the ray type. But uh, material returns different material based on the ray type, while map returns different maps based on a ray type. So it's Corona ray switch material and Corona ray switch map. So the usual kind of thing you can use ray switch for is, for example, if I want, if I just render the scene as it is, let's first take a look at it. We have some teapot, some sort of air conditioning unit, and the scene is some sort of uh, like rooftops of the skyscrapers or something like that. And let's say, uh, for example, let's, let's pick this material. Let's say we would have some some really vibrant color on our paint. And since Corona is physically based render, then if we have some really vibrant color, we can expect some really strong color bleeding. If the color was even brighter, the effect would be really extreme. And a lot of times it may happen that uh, the art director or someone comes in and says yeah yeah i'm i'm happy with the with the color but uh, the color bleeding on the scene is just too much it doesn't look aesthetically that that good so uh, the way we can tackle this is of course using ray switcher where mm, in case of material we can just plug uh, our <coughs> material into all of the slots but uh, actually leave out the global animation slot. If we just leave anything empty in the ray switcher, it will mean uh, those rays will just pass straight through. And so if, the, if we leave out the global animation rays, then our, uh, our object is not gonna cast any shadows, nor is it gonna cast any color bleeding in our scene. So if I just render this, oops, Let's just first assign our ray switch material to this. You can see it looks just flat, really kind of ugly. But uh, what we can do here is just create current material. And uh, let's maybe make it just dark gray and put this into global illumination slot. And now we, we've satisfied the requirements of our art director. The object is still exactly as red as it was, but the color bleeding now is just subtle. Of course, if he says we do, we he doesn't want any color bleeding at all. Just make the material completely black. It will just suck in all the light rays, and the color bleeding is completely gone. You can do funky things with it, like you can, for example, make it illuminate the scene around it even though it the material itself isn't that shiny all right and so another thing you may want to do is like uh, you may you may have some shot where oops let's plug this in as well uh, you may have some shot where it doesn't look uh, really good if uh, some objects are are reflecting in the uh, object of interest. For example, if you have uh, perfume bottles next to each other and they bo they all reflect each other, you may want to avoid that. So what we can do here is just leave the reflect override empty. If I render, you can see our, uh, our air conditioning is completely gone. If we render them together, it's still in there. It just doesn't show up in the in the teapot. 
or of course we can we can set it to not show up in the refractions and uh, if we now create it let's say a metal plane or the, uh, I mean glass glass plane or some glass box like this uh, let's create quick glass material assign it now if we render the mesh is still there but it's not visible through the glass so this is another thing we can do or it can be different uh, different sort of material through the glass so maybe if we look at it through the glass then it might be like some sort of ghost let's say we want to we want it to be some ghost which when viewed through, through glass will always always look different so let's take for example fall off and let's put it in the opacity slot set it like this to some spooky blue color oops i didn't want to do that uh, here some blue nice blue color <coughs> and put it in our fraction slot and now if we render this we can see it looks some like some sort of x-ray like let's say we want to look at it through some x-ray and yep we got some nice x-ray effect going on okay so uh, this is the material uh, another thing another use case is let's say you have some floating motion graphics in your scene and you really do not want uh, it affecting the scene in any way like you don't want to see it in reflections you don't want to see it uh, you don't want it to cast shadows on your scene or something like that but you still want to want it to be there so that's easy just uh, keep only direct direct override slot filled and keep all of the other slots empty and if I now just render it's not going to cast any shadows so it's going to look ugly but if you have some just some simple floating text uh, then uh, this setup will cause it to not affect your scene in any way except for the direct visibility the direct rays uh, let's put this material back on and of course we can do the same with the ray switcher map so let's let's grab the ray switch map here we go and we can plug it here and for our direct visibility we want it to be let's say green and let's get some checker and for all the other slots it will be checkerboard so if I now hide the box and render as you can see when we view it directly it's just green if we look look at it through the glass it's checkerboard and if we take a look at it through the reflections it's checkerboard as well so yeah this is this is another kind of fake or artistic control we can we can do with it so for example another kind of nice combination would be let's get back our research material we can for example plug it only into global animation and direct override so it will still cast shadows and it will still be visible directly but in, it won't be visible in refra refractions no reflections so it's kind of really powerful powerful way to uh, for the for the artistic control okay and uh, i believe this is it for the for the first part uh, where we use trace switchers to to create some basic fakes and in the next part we'll take a look at how to utilize ray switchers to do some performance optimizations in our scene so see you in the part two